thank you amrita for a nice start and introduction to the today's uh, talk uh, so first of all thank you kaki lab for having me here talk about uh, this topic about goa um, as it is usually we are, our attempt is to talk about the goa beyond beaches and the goa that generally what is portrayed in front of everybody as a party place and as a local goan it has always been an attempt to show the real side and culture of goa to people and uh, the best way i think you can explore a place or explore uh, the history the present the geography everything in one plate is through its art any state uh, for that matter so here i am today sharing about goa's kavi art uh, though it is i am considering it as goa it is not only limited to today's political boundaries of goa but uh, what were once upon a time culturally part of goa or you know uh, the 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 boundaries of political uh, dynasties kept changing throughout the time so this will include some places of maharashtra and some places of karnataka because art is something and artist is something you cannot really uh, bind by just the political boundaries they keep moving they keep exchanging so uh, i can i think that most of the people who are present today and listening to this talk you may have been or uh, uh, to goa or goa is not something completely new to anyone most people in india are aware of goa goa's culture and uh, what to expect in a bit of history of goa so just to rebrush it goa has uh, it's one of the smallest state in india it has gone through uh many cultural uh, dynasties have been part of you know goa's history like we have uh, in ancient times the kadamba period in 10th century after that uh, we have been part of the vijayanagar empire then the portuguese came in and uh, later uh, then we became part of india as the this india as one nation so even before the kadambas there were other dynasties also so but goa being a very small place everybody has left their own uh, mark on the culture here and uh, the what the cultures of goa that we see today is more of uh, it's a mix it's what we call as a you know like a melting point uh, pot of different cultures uh, in goa we have a dish called as khatkate which is made using many vegetables a uh, similar of that you can uh, find in kerala also called as avial so uh, what uh, the art style or the culture the art and architecture of goa has influence from different dynasties that were uh, that ruled in goa and today what we see in present times is a beautiful mix of uh, different elements at one point so this photograph that i've used is on borders of goa and maharashtra uh, in a village called redi uh, or reddi for that matter uh, so here you can see different architectural elements which are from different cultural styles it uh, so kavi art has folk uh, art then uh, some of the portuguese variations you know so it is uh, today when we see kavi art it's elements from different art styles so but before that let's get to the main point or the crux what is kavi art or why is it called kavi what does it literally mean does it even have any meaning for uh, so kavi is seen in today's uh, goa maharashtra karnataka it is derived from a word kav uh, if anybody here is uh, you know i consider most would be marathi speaking people so cow is even in maharashtra they say for red soil uh, it is called as cow and uh, when people uh, put rangoli designs they apply a small layer of cow the red mud even on a tile today so uh, in goa or uh, the konkan coast you get this lateritic soil which is red in color we hardly get black soil so this red soil is also known as cow uh it is it has iron it is iron rich and uh, also known as red ochre or hematite in english or geru in marathi and hindi as well so this is what it looks like geru is the most common color and since you have seen the picture of kavi art on the poster and one of the picture that was shared for the social media uh, 
so uh, you must have seen that it is white and red art these are the two colors that are common uh, that are uh, used for kavi designs but what is so unique about it what is so unique about kavi art because geru or the red color it, which is something which we have seen it being used in most of the cultures so this photograph here is from bimbetka so bimbetka also to express their uh, whatever they saw they have used red color which was the easiest available uh, pigment that they had uh, maharashtra you have the most famous varli here also you have white on red before that you saw red on any other, like a natural surface but this is the most common combination white and red and it is found across culture over, all over the world so what is so unique about kavi that we are having a special talk on kavi so the kavi art is not only uh, like i'll go back to the photograph what you see here or even here is painting like they have taken the pigment and they have applied it on the surface it could be surface as in it could be a wall uh, it could be a stone it could be a paper but what has happened in kavi it is uh, there's a layer of lime there's a layer of red color mud and they have exposed the inner layer by using a pointed metallic reed so i think maybe when i show the pictures you will understand it better what i mean to say so this is one of my very old picture when i started working on kavi art you can see here that in this picture uh, this is a uh, scene of kaliya mardan the borders are not black the borders are white because they are etched out they are not painted but they are etched out okay this is the most uh, significant characteristic of kavi art you can see here also in this photograph uh, the problem with uh, kavi to show in original format is we rarely get one because like here also you can see it is repainted on the original one and while repainting they have used asian paint or something like that so you can't really get that etching sense very easily because they keep repainting it but this is one of the pictures of old kavi uh this i got from internet it's not from my collection uh, because i could find this easily mm. you can see here that it has got faded it's that mud that earthy uh, texture of mud used as a pigment you can feel in this painting much better than the previous ones that i've shown and uh, uh, as i show you clo clear uh, closer pictures or i will share the link of a youtube video where i video documented uh, the close uh, photographs of kavi you can see that they are etched they are not painted this is one photograph where you can see the layers of the painting so on laterite is used as the base and on top of that they would paint the lime lime plaster uh, you can also guess from here the thickness of the plaster so after one layer of lime plaster they would put red and then they would keep the stencil and etch out the design uh, the easiest understanding or the uh, example that i can give is during school days all of us uh, would do this like they, there would be a compass in the geometry box and we would use it to draw so something similar is used here to etch out this is from my collection oh, this is one house in uh, ankola which is in karnataka today and where you have lot of konkani people uh, and they this was for their house or uh, the house was abandoned or they would use it only for festivals i think or once a year or something like that so this is the oldest one of the old specimens of kavi that we get this is also repainted uh, using uh, you know modern colors but here you can see like how the white intricate lines are done the white is supposed to be the border here in so how old is this art is the most another faq that we get so this art the uh, this is one picture here that i would like to share uh, so how do you date an art style or how do you date an art uh, specimen so there is lot of people usually ask us do you do carbon dating so let me clear it out here carbon dating can be only used where there is carbon like uh, say for example anything is burnt 
so suppose there is any painting that is burnt the carbon formed on that can be dated but it will only give you the date contemporary to the carbon the art could be older uh, is there any other way unless the easiest way uh, or the easiest way for us as an archaeologist is if at all they have written a date the artist has written a date by signing or is there any date where it is mentioned or a written record but there is no scientific way like you would uh, put this art through a test and then you would get a date even if there is something it would be too costly to figure that out and then it would be still subjective and it would be still plus minus years of many years so art can be dated mostly through style of that fashion period so that is uh, it's not an absolute date that we would get but it is a relative date that we get so in this case when i was doing my research on kavi art when i was in my third year of uh, bachelor's in history which was in 2015 oh, the only way we could date the kavi artist see the date of the shrine where the kavi artist because by default the shrine the place the architect the building would be older than the art but a lot of people usually get confused the date of the building construction is usually connected to the art i mean if you built a house uh, in the year 2001 but you have painted it recently in 2022 so the art style cannot be considered as it is from 20 2001 so the same thing for historical buildings also so it is the relative of we try to put it in one century we try to understand the context of lot of things so this is devi morzai sanstan and here in this uh, picture you can see there is a typical arch which is a portuguese style so what i can make a statement that i can make safely is that this art is after portuguese at least this art in this place this uh, morzai temple by default it is after the introduction of portuguese so maybe medieval times of 16 to 17th century so then the search was uh most places where we see this art are they all uh, are the all, are all the buildings old uh, you know post portuguese the temple the shrine the murti the worship of devi morzai could be old but the buildings keep changing this one clearly you can see the portuguese uh, architectural elements the again this one here this is from karnataka ankola the second case that i uh, found when i was working on kavi is that many temples from goa were shifted because the portuguese would destroy them the three talukas were under portuguese and they would forcefully destroy and convert the people so lot of gauts araswad brahmins and other communities also but the most migration was of the gsbs they went over a night uh, taking the kula murti of the kula devi and they went to uh, parts in goa which were not under portuguese and they went to some parts which were under uh, say like they went to maharashtra madhya pradesh uh, kerala and karnataka so this temple was uh, it was shifted from uh, goa to karnataka so by default it means this again is post portuguese art then same art you can see in the churches as well so these are the different contexts that we uh, got to figure out the date of the kavi art uh, so uh, here you can see this three talukas which were uh, which are marked in red were under portuguese and the other three other uh, the, the part in yellow was not under portuguese in the first 200 years it took them 200 years to take the whole of goa that we see today so in 1510 they took the area which was marked as tiswadi ma uh, bar in 1540 bardes and salsed and in 17th uh, uh, like in 18th century they took the rest of goa so we don't get any temple which is old like for, say from 10th century in these areas like bardes tiswadi and salsed so then it limits your understanding how uh, what was their kavi art in the old temples because firstly in these three talukas each and every temple was destroyed but then you would ask me what about other talukas the yellow area which was not under portuguese in the first time but goa we have heavy rainfall uh, same with the same like the whole of coastal uh, western coast so even if there are there were temples which were built in say 10th century not all have survived considering the uh, climate here 
so we don't really have uh, evidences of kavi art in the uh, kadamba period or even before or after that so the all the evidence that is surviving today is of 17th to 18th century so based on that currently it is considered as 17th to 18th century this could be challenged this could, the new evidences can be brought uh, in light if we find any more leads so uh, if you want to see kavi art designs where can you travel and where can you see it so what we said is goa maharashtra karnataka so uh, mostly in the western coast some people have noted something similar in madhya pradesh recently but there were a lot of konkanis uh, who went to madhya pradesh under the maratha empire so maybe possibly that they could have taken a uh, few artists there uh, it's always subject to research and more new findings so uh, this is a small list that i had prepared uh, there is there are more temples this is just a simple just for example that where you can see kavi art in goa uh, if anybody is interested uh, i'm doing my youtube videos on this temples whichever has kavi art so you look and look up for those as well this is in goa you see in uh, karnataka also so mostly you see it in the temples of the konkanis and there are only one or two churches which has kavi art uh, which is surviving today i mean the kavi art is surviving today we also see it in the private homes the three churches which has kavi art today and there are uh, private homes which has kavi art uh, where you can see they have used it as a decoration for their uh, the walls and things like that so uh, while doing this list of uh, places which had kavi art it was noticed that it even in karnataka it was mostly the konkani people they had kavi like people who went from goa to karnataka uh, with their kula devatas only they had kavi art so even if there was a temple in like or original dravidian temple they used more of the stone art but only the temples which of konkanis or the the gsp mathas in karnataka they had kavi and you see it in some temples like uh, mahuli temple in zorambe in maharashtra which is on again borders of goa and maharashtra it is could be from today's border of goa maharashtra it is a half an hour to 45 minutes of drive this is again uh, the one of the old pictures which is not repainted this was on the first floor so maybe then it survived the modernization or the restoration of in today's terms so this you can see this is ram uh, you know shri ram uh, killing ravan that it is he's shown in his dashanan form which is 10 heads uh, so why i'm sharing it here is why kavi art why did they use only kavi to decorate in goa why did they not use other colors uh, first question may be mm, did they not afford it but then goa you have this grand churches you have the grand temples they 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 could afford lot of things uh, they, uh, they if they could afford palanquins of silver they could have re really afforded other colors also why not them why not have sculptures like you see in uh, maybe elora or badami or uh, haribidu why goan temples didn't have that or maybe any temples in konkan didn't have that so the first reason is it's not always about what i want but what suits my climate especially when we are talking about the medieval times firstly konkan region you have laterite stone laterite is quite a porous stone so you couldn't really do any sculptures in it so even if i wanted to do sculptures like elora caves in goa it was not possible because my stone is laterite we do have some black basalt stone but it's also of very rough quality uh, it's not like the ones that we get in the uh, the deccan region so the so for them you could either paint or you could use wood but with the wood if it was an exteriors the problem is again the rainfall wood would get termites and other things very soon and because of the same considering the heavy rainfall and the humidity the moisture that we have here uh, you know if you had multicolor paintings the possibly colors could run on to each other even for kavi if it was used as just painting like murals 
or just you know like like normal painting that we do like the uh, watercolors kind of painting uh, possibly the colors again would run out to each other when you etch out you are actually creating a kind of depth between one uh, design and another so even if the colors run out i mean even if it is exposed to water or the humidity the colors will not run on to one on another secondly you can see here uh, it's got dirty with lot of soil and things like that so you could simplest way to maintain it was take a coconut uh, husk and just clean it scrub it like that you wouldn't actually mess with the uh, you know colors or anything if it was multicolor there were chances when you would scrub one color will go on to another so uh, actually our ancestors were very much uh, you know sustainable they gave thought to climate and what fits them it's not the greed but it's a complete holistic thought process that i learned while i was uh, working on kavi so this is my biggest take away i would say this is what we have currently uh, in most places this is from marikamba temple in sirsi in karnataka uh, so here you have they have repainted on kavi designs because the marikamba temple has a huge jatra where lakhs and lakhs of people come so they have to maintain it uh, the temple and make it look nice every two years so they have used oil paint but i would still appreciate this instead of completely uh, removing the walls and putting something new they have at least repainted so at least what we can see is we know there was kavi and secondly we can get the designs at least we we know what kind of art uh, patterns designs were used in kavi so even if it is not in its original form so what kind of designs do we mostly find in kavi art we get decorative motif uh because i mentioned it is used stencil and you have to etch it out so you have to do it while both the pigment the red and the white uh the red is from the mud and white is from uh lime is wet so once it dries out you can't do etchings so what you usually find is easiest way the fastest thing that you could do it's scrolls Uh, which you could have one stencil and do keep doing the borders. Secondly, is geometricals easier again than the pillar decoration. Then, if you could really afford the budget, you would have the divine figures, semi-divine figures, narratives, then contemporary designs, and then animals also, which would come as a part of the story or as you know lions on the side or something like that. Uh, mostly, we see Vaishnava figures or stories from say Ramayana, Mahabharat, or Bhagwat. maybe because the kavi that we see today is mostly which has survived in the uh, gokarna pratagari mat so this is one of the temples that is survived in its original form uh, with i mean original kavi is uh, shri veer maruti temple at adwalpal which is in north goa and here you can see there are two hanuman uh, on the sides uh, inside you have jay vijay which is the most common again and this also has two lions on uh, internal side and you can see that every a uh, border is uh, used of kavi to decorate the, and mark the spaces these are the scrolls the or the nakshis uh, the one here on the left side which is like s patterns this is the most common one that we see in kavi uh, it is so much common that people would consider like kavi as much this it's like colgate of kavi and then you have uh, more designs in terms of uh, scrolls then the geometric so the geometric patterns also it is uh, up to the artist creativity how much and how he wants to do how he uh, so they have experimented so these are few more geometric patterns that we see in kavi art then this is one of the narratives uh, or the divine figures this is uma maheshwar so you can see there are five heads which is panchanan uh, on top on the head uh, you have uh, ganga and middle uh, you can see that there is parvati or umma which is seating uh, she seated on his lap because it's repainted it's not very clear uh, i mean it's it's confusing it's too many lines maybe when they were they had done it first it was maybe it was easier to understand it at first so this this is from karnataka in a place called uh, kumta 
uh, at Marsanarayani temple. And the temple was originally in Goa, in a place called Verna. And from there, they shifted uh, the, one of the Utsav Murtis of Deity before Portuguese destruction to Kumta. So again, the Konkani connect. Uh, this is also from Hunnavar, which is nearby Kumta in Karnataka. Here you can see uh, this is Vithal. And uh, though they are Konkani uh, temples or managed by Konkani people, the artist may have had background of uh, Karnataka style. So you can see here influences of uh, traditional South Indian paintings or traditional uh, Vijayanagar paintings. This is again where there's a narrative. Uh, they have they, this is a war between uh, Krishna and uh, sorry uh, Arjun and Karna and you can see Krishna on one side of the charioter. So they have also written uh, the na the names. Okay, so there is Karna Raj and Arjun which is written in Devanagari. So this this is the narrative that we find. So these are few of the uh, understanding of caveat so bold and clear reverse outlines as in they've used white for an outline lines have been used are thin the limited co color palette which is only white and red compositions are simple because they had to uh, do it when the soil would be wet so they are mostly monocynic or iconic what is also understood is what you can see here they are side facing so where did they get stencil from is mostly uh, i think it is from yakshagan uh, they must have considered yakshagan stencils yakshagan is a folk theater in karnataka and used because you find same uh, narratives in kavi and same narratives in yakshagan also so they may have used old leather puppets as stencils here then uh, bodies of the men are heroic. Uh, I'll not get into details of it. This could be, uh, you can take a screenshot. You get uh, influence of classical South Indian iconography, Vijayanagar style, Mysore style, and also of Chitrakati and other styles from Maharashtra as well. So get the, some uh, European design uh, ideas also. And the typical Maratha painting. So it's like... Kavi uh, survived more as a technique than as a school of art. And it was the time of so much of political instability. You don't, you didn't know what was happening, uh, which governments, I mean, governments as in which dynasties or the cultures would be ruling. So artist was shifting from the same artist, maybe was working in a temple in Goa, maybe in Maharashtra, Karnataka, or same was working in churches also. So in Kavi art, you get, a, uh, you know, designs from... Uh, every uh, style or every culture. So origin and antiquity was spoken, technique, then monochrome. Uh, what we uh, also observed was label inscriptions. So because uh, if, when you have, like say Ganesh or Arjun Krishna, sorry, when you have Ganesh, Arj, uh, Krishna or uh, Durga, it is easier to identify. Like Ram uh, uh, and uh, Ravan is also very easy. Anybody with basic knowledge of Hinduism can identify. But what about characters like uh, Draupadi uh, or Bhim? Draupadi could be anyone. So they have made the job easier. Uh, at Maharsa Temple Kumta, there is a picture of Akrur. And they have written in Devanagari as well as in Kannada that he is Akrur. So these were also interesting insight because uh, that they've used both the uh, scripts. Then the sort of themes that we have seen. Uh, that is mostly the Hindu uh, narratives of the Puran and the Bhagavad stories. Stylistic affiliations also can be noted in each uh, uh, narrative, each painting of Kavi uh, presents a beautiful insights of different cultures the artist was interacting with. And then we, uh, you can see here the use of stencil as in a similar type of stencil has been used, which is side profile. So uh, looks like they've used, you know, it was easier for them to have one stencil and then use it. And then based on the insignia or the attributes, they could either make it as Hanuman or Bhim or Garud. So the problem that has happened is maybe is used the same stencil. Uh, Bhim also they have shown a pointed nose, which is something that is very common in Garud or the mouth of uh, Hanuman. But for Bhim also, it is very clearly done. 
then this is a crude that i was mentioning here they only mentioned devnagari some places they mentioned devnagari and kannada as well so coming to current trends of kavi uh, so why when in 2015 i started working on kavi art it was something that was completely forgotten so goa got liberation in 1961 and after that it was only a lot of development and progress took place here in goa a uh, tourism industry got its boom and at the same time you have the same uh, climatic conditions also so as you see uh, you have seen in some of the, of the original paintings of kavi art it gets uh, you know moisture and uh, more uh, you know moss or things like that so uh, there was a trend to use say uh, marble or painted bright colors or something so kavi was something that was considered as old and even when i was interacting with people who um, had kavi art in their temples in their village temples they were like yeah we had it but then the temple was small and now we want to expand it it was very old stuff so we removed it and we now have something else there and it was something that they didn't really it was not uh, the, the importance of kavi or the it was not in fashion or something that i would say and it was completely forgotten after that even there were no traditional artists at the moment who are practicing it by traditional artist what i mean is somebody who's learned it from father and his father who has learned it from grandfather which is their traditional occupation the kavi artists that we have now are either fine arts trained artist or somebody who is from the artist community and he has learned the basics of kavi art and is now practicing now that it's in fashion again so uh, i could not interview any traditional artist in maharashtra karnataka and goa also where i could find the lineage of the artist where there would be say rituals connected to the art or anything which was passed on from one generation to another so that know how uh, is completely lost at the moment then this is from kumta again uh, sorry this is from sirsi in karnataka uh one of the uh, prakar area which had kavi art they used it to store uh, you know things so it is something that it is like it exists there but it is not very much given attention to uh, a lot of time people didn't even know that this was called as a kavi art it was just that oh those white and red paintings a uh, lot of times there was good intentions of retaining the kavi art at least the designs the technique instead of completely going for something modern and completely different but this is how it was done using normal paint and no redoing it but i would still appreciate this as this at least keeps the uh, design a motive for us to study even though it's not in its original technique so this is how most of the kavi designs were repainted okay uh, just to know that thank you slide because i didn't have the original photograph of this this is old house uh, house in ankola but the problem here was uh, the how the people have shifted to different places uh, taking care of the old homes is some it's a tedious task considering again the moisture and other practical problems that are given so most houses are going for or uh, renovation they're keeping the house but at least uh, renovations in considering um, maybe painting or you know like changing to tiles or something so in uh, today's practical challenges the art is somewhere you know it is uh, very difficult to maintain it so if somebody can afford they're doing it but then of course there are too many stakeholders in the decision process also so uh, why is it again in uh, you know in vogue or in everybody is talking about it or how could we protect and preserve it the kavi art is it's limited for wall it was limited for wall it was a wall art it is a traditional wall art but then now it is being used in you know in in promoted through uh, like you know like other mediums if i can it it, it would be too costly to do the art on my wall uh, so and practically it may not be possible for every person in today's time so this is ma'am veena from uh, mangalore she started having kavi designs uh, on canvas and this could be shared as gifts or you know having collectibles 
So this at least started the buzz of awareness. What art is this? Then uh, in Goa, there is one artist called Sagar Naik Moe, and there are many more artists who are using Kavi, but they're doing doing it on canvas the idea is using mud and the lime and etchings on it so uh, this was mentioned in monkey bath by honorable prime minister and after that it got a good bo uh, boost in terms of like it's it went to na national level and even within goa and nearby everybody started talking after about it after that so now uh, this is some of the artwork by sagar naimoe you have he's done uh, these are contemporary designs so this is this is the best way i feel we can the uh, you know like present the art in a very new form and this is done on paper so it's a collectible also and this helps uh, share new thoughts new ideas in the old technique then uh, this is kavi art uh, being redone in its original style uh, this was done by government of Goa, a department of archaeology at uh, Saptakoteshwar Temple. Uh, I would like to share here because I think many people are from Maharashtra. This temple was built by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in Goa. And this is one of the first temples to be rebuilt after uh, the original was destroyed by the Portuguese. And this has completed 350 plus years. And commemorating this, government of Goa decided to uh, uh, renovate it. And they removed uh, the whole lime plaster to re renovate it from inside. And the Kavi art was redone here using the same technique. Okay, so uh, it is a you know, fact that I would like to appreciate that uh, initially Initiatives like this can be taken by Department of Archaeology where you can focus on the research of the technique and everything. But for others, what they're doing is if they can't uh, do the Kavi art in its original style, they're at least doing the same, they're taking uh, inspiration from the same designs, whatever we know, and they're doing it using the paint. In whatever way, it keeps it going because at least there is awareness about this art. Like one example is, uh, it is being done in Secretariat in Goa, Goa Mantrale. They have not done an original style, but at least the same designs have been reused. So this was the whole, in short, I covered, tried to cover about Kavi art of Goa. Uh, if there are any questions, please. Yeah. Thanks for that, Sunny. Um... Yeah, you know, there are some questions, so I'll I'll, I'll read out. Uh, but before I do that, you mentioned that you have a, a YouTube channel that you're putting out. Can you talk a little about that? Because I think some of the questions that people have might uh, be addressed by that answer. Uh, so my YouTube channel is called as Savni Shetty only. I have tried, I've recently started it. So it, I'm covering a few of the Kavi temples that we have visited. I'll just share it here. Okay, so this is just one more uh, temple that I recently visited. This is in uh, Hodaude near Vengurla. So they had Kavi art, but now they uh, in few years ago they repainted this modern designs on it. So here you have Kavi plus you know uh, one more layer of the modern uh, contemporary like the Raja Ravi post Raja Ravi Verma style sort of art here. So I'll just share the link of my channel also. So this is my channel. And I have a playlist of Kavi art of Konkan. This is in English. And I've done, oh, sorry. So, uh, Maharashtra, there is one temple called as a Mauli temple in Zorambe, which might be going for renovation, but currently it is being a lot of uh, art historians and activists are working on it. So I got an opportunity to do a small video with Konkani Ranmanus. Uh, it's a channel in Maharashtra. So even that, and that episode was in Marathi. So if anybody wants, they can see that. But this is the video of YouTube channel. Okay. Thanks so much. Um, so I think Yashpal Mehta had a question right up the upfront, which was, can we see the reed used to etch the painting? But I think that towards the end, you had that uh, almost to the end, the slide there, you showed the techniques. And I think I saw the reed being used in that, at least one of the pictures of it. Yeah, uh, you 
of any metal so it would depend from i think artist to artist right and and also i had an add on question to that which also i think you might have addressed in that but uh what are the materials actually in the that are used in the caveat i mean how is the red ochre pigment uh, prepared and is it just the reed that is used or are there other tools typically that an artist would use uh so um the basics that we know is they would use the mud the red mud the finest quality mud and they would uh, put it in a sieve and take the finest layer of that and uh, while they would make the paste they would also put jaggery and some uh, herb, you know like uh, leaves to it so that it would stick together uh, first layer would be lime which would be obtained from seashells and then yeah. second layer would be of this red mud i think uh, in one of the slide with the last one you could see the paste also being made yes that's right uh, some places if the mud was too loose they have used jaggery or any other material that could help them use as a gum or you know something to stick together right okay um so rajiv sate asks you know i said that a video demo would be nice to see but i think uh, some of that will be there perhaps on your channel okay. Okay, uh, video demo. Uh, I because I'm uh, from history background. I am not an artist, so I've not practiced kavi. But there is one artist, uh, Janardhan Havanje. He, if you see, uh, then on YouTube he has put up a video demo. Good. So um, I focus more on the stories in kavi art. Actually. Right, fair enough. Okay, so Soham asks question saying, do kavi designs in churches also portray stories? Uh, no, Kavi designs in churches, they only use geometric or the floral motif, like a design motif, no no uh, human figures in that. Only maybe small animal figures, like a small lion or, you know, there's a gandabir under the, the two-headed uh, eagle, but no human figures or stories in it. Uh, Ashish Kublekar actually asked two questions. The first one you answered, have there been efforts to revive the Kavi art? And uh, the second one is, uh, how long would a traditional Kavi art last from the time it was painted? So far that we have, the, uh, the original ones are maybe from 18 to 19, uh, maybe at least the 19th century, uh, at least. So they've survived quite at least 200 years with good care uh, of the house. Right. So, Revati Subramaniam said, delighted to learn about this less known art in Tamil Nadu on festival days. Kavi powder is incorporated into the traditional kolam. Yeah, same with Maharashtra also for Rangoli. And uh, Harshwadan uh, asks, is Kavi art also being used by the Portuguese or has Kavi, ha Kavi art has its influence abroad somewhere? Uh, so Portuguese, uh, the churches had Kavi, but then there was one uh, time where they said this is vernacular and this has to be whitewashed. So the Kavi in one of the church that was found, uh, this is uh, the Our Lady of Rosary, it's next to that. It's the cross of the, uh, it's the church of the Whipping Cross, where you have the Museum of Christian Art. So while they were restoring the museum uh, building, uh, one of the layer of the lime uh, fell off and they saw Kavi be beneath that. So then they could find out, you know, they tried to trace there was Kavi art or some place where there was an altar, like a wooden one. When they removed that for restoration, there was Kavi beneath that or some designs beneath that. So there was this tradition that this is a vernacular and it should not be, there should be only white color. That was one, uh, you know, time thought process in Kavi, uh, in Goa. So we a lot of people say this may have come from the Portuguese, but uh, this is too... Uh, common uh, practice here also like using red mud so we can't really make a statement graffito is something like the etching uh, you find in india also and you find it in the european continents also so it is actually very uh, tricky to say it's like the chicken and egg situation but the kavi the practice the traditions that we find or the the designs that we find we mostly find it in the temples and the uh, Hindu homes. So if it may have come from the Portuguese, we should have found a uh, good amount of, uh, you know, Kavi in the churches and the Catholic homes also. But it okay. feels more like it was Goan, uh, native Goan. Uh, 
Uh, is there any regional differences between the uh, styles of Kavi art across the various regions in Goa, Karnataka? Uh, so Kavi, uh, when, when it went from place A to place B, it went only as a technique. And designs, everybody could put up, you know, the artists, say, in Maharashtra, you had uh, designs which have more Chitrakati style. And in Karnataka, you have more Yakshagan influence. It's just like you want to show Krishna, but uh, in Maharashtra, you would sh uh, show, you know, you know, more wearing, looking like a Marathi uh, style, maybe in terms of the attributes, or there's a painting of Yashoda and Krishna in Zorambe in Maharashtra, where she's shown wearing Navari. And uh, when in, uh, it is shown in Karnataka, it's shown typical the uh, Vijayanagar style. They've just used that stencil in painting. So the technical, uh, you know, the stylistic difference. So as I said, Kavi didn't, uh, you know, go as a school of art. Like this is the only way you show the ears. So it just went as a technique. It went as a technique, right. Very nice. You can do Devi also, you can do Mary also. It's up to you. Technique is Kavi. So Vanita says, brilliant talk. Uh, she also asked a question, uh, Kav Kavita art in Kolkata slash West Bengal, question mark. I may have missed it perhaps. Uh, no, I, at least I don't know of anything in West Bengal. I mean, I don't have my research on that. Uh, Meera says, such intricate work, beautiful geometric designs. Um, <clears throat> Harshwadhan asks, can Kavya art artists uh, canvases be seen in any of the New Delhi museums? Uh, I don't know on that because I don't. Uh, there was one in IGNCA in Delhi. There was uh, one of a Goan girl. She was work. She had done one for exhibition, but I don't know if it was a time-based exhibit or it is permanent exhibit. And another question from him is: Is Kavi also used? Uh, also used mirror stenciling for etching the final figure? Uh, we don't have anybody who's a traditional Kavi artist. So right. I, don't know, I don't know if they mean mirror as in the mirror, the we, the one we use. Yeah. Like how they do um, I don't know if it's the one, if it's, if they mean it that way. Difficult to understand from the sentence. But uh, in any case, um, Sonal asked the question, is Kavi art similar to Patachitra? Uh, so Patachitra is done on palm leaf, uh, if I know it correctly, and then they use the black uh, reed for that to do the etchings. But and Kavi is more on the wall. Now it is being used on the movable mediums like paper and canvas, but traditionally it was on the wall only. So it's different than the. And um, I think you, as you said, it's a technique, and that how you apply it is different. So. Uh, it's good to see. But are there any modern adaptations or innovations of this Kavi art? So Sagar uh, Mure's uh, picture that I've shown, his artwork, it, that could be considered as modern adaptation of it. We are using other colors, is doing it on the canvas also. And modern right. designs also. And I see a final question on Vinita, which I think you addressed right at the upfront. Kavi art is made of Geru paint. Uh, I think we've covered it. Uh, it is That's made right. of Geru and paint is used to, uh, you know, like touch up what we could say. Well, there's no further questions. Um, I think you covered the YouTube thing, the question that Rinita had, but this was really, really interesting, Savani. Thank you so much. It was a very interesting talk, uh, which I enjoyed and I know a lot of the people did here on the group as well. So thanks so much for that. And for all of you out there, uh, we look forward to seeing you next week for, with another brilliant talk. Thanks, and have a good weekend. Thank you, Khaki, for hosting this talk. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.